So a lot of times in what we call our lefty circles, they talk about it as almost this this competition between mutual aid and direct action on one side and electoral politics on the other side. And one of the ways that that I'd like to, to talk about it or think about it rather than as this competition, why can't we think of it as the two things working together in that one or the other isn't going to get us there. Mutual aid and direct action are, are a tool that's crucial and education is crucial and these things are, are crucial, but just by itself, it doesn't get you systemic change in terms of, of making a government that works for all of us. Electoral politics is crucial to that and it, it's democracy and we need real democracy. But of course, as we've seen recently, simply voting for the the parties that that were given and the choices were given isn't getting us anywhere it's just getting us more of the same corrupt government and so the the question is how can we how can we get there and like i'll bring up something from my eric t red site the site that i have that i have the demands on and different things and notes and and resources and so mutually direct action, rather than framing these things as being in competition, let's talk about doing both together. How can we collaborate? And there's the mutual aid on one side and direct action, and then there's radical electoral politics is what I would propose on the other side in that not just, not just this idea of just simply voting or just simply doing electoral politics, but doing it in a new demanding way. And step one is to have a set of demands. Oh, I I forgot to say the title of this episode, which is Demands. And we're going to be talking about these uh, demands for real democracy. And then when you have that, that's a tool that becomes the core of what you're doing and, and what you're demanding. And so when we're doing direct action, I mean, the, the demands need to be at the center of that. When we're doing electoral politics, we put demands at, at the center of it. And so item two, we, we demanded of every candidate or representative. And if they're not on board with it, then, then we call them out. We call them out in a, in a serious way, in a direct action way. Provide zero support for Democrats and Republicans until they start enacting the demands. That means no votes, no money, no praise, because they're not doing it provide all possible support and aid to third party and independent candidates who do support the demands. If you're getting roadblocks, you know, you intensify and and just be be relentless about pointing out the real source of our problems. The top 1% versus the rest of us. That is the fight. Yeah, and the direct action that, that can come from that is, is, like you said, more people need to go to these events and confront these politicians or people that are, are running for these seats and make it difficult for them and present these demands and, and make them uh, either give an example of, of whether they support or whether they don't. It's also about pulling away the money from the two-party systems uh, and, and supporting third party until we see major changes. I actually see uh, it a little bit uh, for, for mutual aid and direct action. I view it almost as a, as a pathway to, to the radical electoral politics. Mm-hmm. I think that one of the things with, with mutual aid and direct action is it's not going to be sustainable for 300 million people or whoever many people we have in the United States. It's I, I think that it's it's a great idea and it's, and it's noble to do and I do encourage it. I do think that we need to be realistic and say that we are people, uh, we have biases, and we are mainly going to benefit mutual aid and direct action to people that that are in line with us or think similarly to us. So where I see it being connected is we can have mutual aid and direct action to going through to support people that could uh, become political challengers. Uh, And so, you know, it's by doing that mutual aid and direct action, we can strengthen the left but what that really needs to come come back to is that that radical electoral politics. We think about uh, candidates. Uh, Shama Sawan is is one that that with socialist alternative. Socialist alternative so far hasn't put money towards national elections, but there could be framework for that in in, in principle in the future. And so take that mutual aid direct action, strengthen the left. But we still need that electoral politics if we're going to make massive countrywide level change. And if we're, if we're doing strikes, you know, mutual aid is a huge part of, of strikes and those kind of movements. And that if you're having people who are walking away from their jobs or striking from their jobs or even doing boycotts, withholding their money in different ways, so the mutual aid can be a big part of that as well. Yeah, definitely. I, I think the mutual aid is great for people that can support it. I, I don't know how many independently wealthy people that we have on our side because those people tend to, to not necessarily be interested in left politics. But yeah, of course, there, there's just the the... 
whole basis of, you know, take what you need, leave what you can. So, yeah. And it, it, in general, one of the frustrations I see with, with a lot of people on, on the left, or one of my frustrations, even with people I like, is that they do a really good job, a crucial job of, of educating people, of talking about what, what the problems are out there. And so then that step one, I recognize it. I go to, okay, what's step two? What do we what do we do about it? And it just feels like we don't ever get to a step two. <laughs> and and to me, you know, that step two is about what we're talking about, having demands, having, you know, doing a radical electoral politics to to make real systemic change. Because if we don't do that, then this government right now that's quite just about completely corrupt and run by big money and corporations, it's going to crush us and it's going to crush anything we do if we don't have some recognition of it and some some plan and, and some actions for dealing with it. I feel like a lot of people on the left have, have given up on democracy itself. And I, I feel like, like, like the most successful psyop the, the establishment has managed is getting us to give up on our own democracy. Um, and the other thing I'd say about it is, is we need to stop focusing on specific people and specific candidates. You know, we need to focus on the money always and focus on you know, what are our demands and think in terms of, of interests, you know, what are the interests of that top 0.1% versus the interests of the 99%? Because that's really what's going on here. Yeah, I agree with you a lot on, on the concept of, of not getting uh, locked into certain people, because uh, that's one thing that we see now in the current political spectrum is this whole cult of personality. You see this with figures like your Nancy Pelosi's and stuff like that. So it's like, well, yeah, that, that's AOC. a good point. Is AOC is a big one. When when we are thinking about incumbents, yeah, it, it should ideally be be people that are that are just talking about the facts. It's like they're not even necessarily a person. They're just, there's just a vessel there for the political facts that should be going forward. What, what we've cultivated now with, with just this obsession over uh, individuals in politics, it's very propagandized. 